Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you this new BB Nodes add-on for Blender, which is an add-on that gives you access to more or less 100 new geometry nodes uh, that help you improve and speed up your modeling or working with geometry nodes in Blender. And the good news is that the first 50 people to purchase this add-on from the link in the description are gonna get a 15% discount. So once you decide to purchase the add-on, you will download it from the link in the description and you'll get that usual zip file that gets installed like any other add-on for Blender. And once you install it, you'll get uh, access to all these nodes from the add menu in your geometry nodes workspace. So just shift A and at the bottom of this list, you'll get this BB nodes submenu that has nine categories and these all these nodes under different categories are there for you to use to your likings. So I'm not going to go over every single node there is here because there's so many of them and not only because of that, but because uh, there is a very, very good user manual on 170 pages that you can download. This is the page from where you will be purchasing this add-on and this is where you get that BB Nodes user manual that I already downloaded for you and you can see it right here. It's a very good manual with everything you need right here so you can check it out even before purchasing the add-on you'll see that there is a, like an explanation and then for every input socket and for every output socket there is an explanation and also a couple of examples so everything is really really clear so let's go back to our workspace and let's check some of these nodes out we'll just check uh, two per category so let's start with the easing curves category and this is a category that gives you like curves that specify a change of a parameter over time. So these are all easing curves. So if X is time and this is a change of a parameter. So there's a lot of these easing curves. They are used mostly in uh, animations, but you can use it for a lot of things and it's just useful to have them. So practically all these curves that you see here are all available inside these nodes. And how do you, how, how can we uh, check them out? Let's just uh, see from the top. So this is just a mesh line of one meter long with 100 vertices, 100 points. And this is set position. So I'm setting a position here, just using one of these easing curve. Let's use this ease back like this. And as you can see, this is what happens. So my X value, this value here, along this X value, uh, an output is coming on the Y like this. And there's a lot of them. I already shown you a bit of them. Let's just check another one. Let's, I don't know, the bounce seems kind of fun. So this is the bouncy one. This is pretty simple. Let's go on and let's go to maybe some of the most interesting categories here. This is the edit mode goodies because these are some tools that you use in edit mode, but in geometry nodes, we don't have them still. So here, let's just try the inset node because that's the one that everybody seems to love best. So here we have just a grid five by five meters six vertices you see it here and let's use the inset node so th this is what happens this is uh, insetting all these faces inside and you have this individual check so you can check for an individual for every face to be inserted and you have also the depth that kind of pushes it outwards and you have that offset even, but here it's obviously going to be even because we, we have only squares. And another thing that we have here, if we uncheck the individual, we can maybe select just part of our geometry. So this is uh, everything that has Y on the positive. And so only this upper part gets inserted. 
and and also you have the output socket which are selection that lets you select for example only center faces of the inset only side faces of the inset and obviously the unaffected faces and that is it for the inset uh, then maybe we can just check out for example the texture displacement so here we have that that same grid we apply this text texture displacement we need to plug in a texture so i'm using this noise texture right here as you can see there is some noising happening on the z axis and we'll just crank up these vertices so let me see what's happening and this is it and all the values here scale roughness stuff like that but also on the node itself we have strength we have mid-level and we have the custom displace axis so now this is the the if we check it now z is because we were uh, our normals were on z axis but we could also maybe i don't know displace it on just i don't know y so now it's displacing only on the y axis which is this direction here well anyway we don't need that and the last thing to check maybe that selection and so only the half of our faces are getting transformed by this texture displacement okay let's move on and after that we've got our fields category and here we're gonna we're gonna check our display attributes node and so if we plug it here we'll see that the indices are getting displayed as you can see so because this is checked so because probably this is the one that will be used most often so indices are displayed like this and obviously you can display any kind of attribute so maybe a position attribute you need to plug it here into the attribute vector because position is a vector and then of course you need to check these switch so one is for float two is for vector so we have uh, and we need to uncheck the indices because we don't want to see indices anymore but so we need to set this to two so this is a vector and now we have our position and also maybe the decimals in this case because and maybe I don't know, make it a bit smaller so that everything stands here and now you see the position of every vertice displayed and then we got this size of the text as well as the rotation of the text if for some reason you need to face in the I don't know some other direction for some reason uh, okay and then uh, we can check maybe the shuffle of attributes which is also cool so you have attributes like position and if we plug it in here and then we need to set position of all these vertices and we just shuffle these position values and this is what happens uh, so every vertex has gone to a place of a different vertex and the best thing about this node because i seen people that did this node but they uh, often lose some data because some of uh, the, the position vertices gets repeated but this doesn't so uh, every single position is used and nothing is lost on the way uh, you, you can see this BB random value here so we have 36 vertices and you, you're gonna notice you can check uh, later if you want but you are not gonna see a number that repeats itself so that's kind of cool and then of course you have the seed and you notice that every time these border vertices are always part of this geometry as you can see okay let's move on we are going really fast so the next category is uh, geometry math so this is just math uh, stuff like uh, 
I don't know, uh, let's check this angle between vectors, for example. So this is just to know that you plug in these vectors. So this is uh, one zero vector and one one vector and it will output the angle between these vectors. And let's just set the angle here. So A is you, uh, this is in radians. So if you want it in degrees, you just check this checkbox. And now it's 45 degrees. As you can see, that's quite right. Just to check it if it's working, let's set this to zero. And now it's 90 degrees. And that's correct. Let's check another one from this geometry math. Let's check. I don't know. I like uh, I like this one, for example. This is a really math kind of thing. So if you so let me just check the manual this is like operation for a right angle triangle and you need to keep in mind this drawing so uh, this is a right angle triangle with a b the uh, that make the right angle c is the hypotenuse and the alpha is opposite the a segment and beta is opposite the b segment and now we have this switch that tells us which values are known to you. So if you know alpha and A, you're gonna set one. If you know alpha and B, then you're gonna set two and so on and so on. And just by knowing two of these five values here, just by knowing two of these five values, you'll be able to know the rest of them. And you also have the, the right angle triangle with ABC, and this is only knowing the three segments you'll be able to find out the alpha the beta and and, and the, the third segment uh, so this is just really geometry math uh, and um, there's nothing much to it and we can check if to see if it's true so if uh, a is for example two and the angle opposite the a is 30 degrees and we need to set so a and alpha so set it to one and then the beta should be should be in radians so two degrees two degrees 60 obviously because that would be an equilateral triangle anyway let's move on next we got instancing and here we have uh well we have a sphere and we're going to distribute points inside an object so inside a sphere we are distributing points as you can see generally uh, we can only distribute points on faces but this is a node that lets you distribute them inside with a lot of options so number of points and point radius it's a bit big and of course the seed and then let's just check one out i kind of use it a lot the, this one and this one's just like a utility like sphere on points so it practically sets an instance on all points but you can also check for a specific index so if you kind of want to know what index is this you just plug in this node and just scroll a bit until you get it and so this index is number 22 and that's very useful very useful for me and a lot of times when I work let's move on let's go to modifiers and these one is the modifiers uh, name says these are just modifiers but made with notes so we have a bunch of them and let's just use for example the bend which is a simple deform modifier with the modality blend of bend of course sorry and we can check the bend axis to be a y like this and let's just set the angle to something more like this and then you can you can even lock the center because as you can see he's bending he's leaving the bottom part fixed and is bending like this but you can lock the center so it bends along the center point and obviously you have this cool thing like limits so it limits from below and also limits from the up and you can see 
the result. And then maybe we can check out, for example, let's just lower this a bit like, like this. And maybe I'll need these many vertices like this. And let's just check out the radial array, which is also cool, like this. And, but we're gonna need to move it away for a bit because transform this away from the center because it readily arrays them around the center origin, which you can move, but from but the default parameters are arraying around the center. So if we move it a bit, here it is. And now it's moving. And you can set it by distance by angle total spacing it's so many so many options here but i already told you so radial array radial array there's really a lot of options and but it's explained very well and you can see here a result so let's do something like that so this is a radial array let's just lower the angle like this and let's just also maybe make a little bit of a screw and and here we have a line rotation so if we want we can keep it fixed or we can align it with rotation and we can keep start orientation so uh, if I if I mute this this is what looks like this and then if I unmute it you can see that it, it left the original geometry where it was and just arrayed along and we also have something really cool here uh, which is the show axis which is a cool little gizmo that helps you to see where is the axis of rotation and also uh, the center as well as this UV offset directions which is what we control as you can see with these two parameters and as you can see this original mesh stays where it should stay and everything else gets arrayed along that axis that we are moving here and also you can set the rotation axis whichever rotation you want and as you can see this original piece doesn't move so that is it let's move on from the modifiers let's go to objects so objects here we can check these are these are kind of generators that just like create something out of nothing so for example we can check our grid hexagon here and uh, the cool thing about this grid unlike some others that i've saw, seen online uh, is that it has this force straight edges so if you want you can use this and of course you have the size of the grid uh, and you have the size of the hexagon you can make it smaller you can make it you can make it bigger and you can uh, offset also on the inside if for some reason you want and you can set the position in the center if you want okay and then the next one we can check out uh, from the objects is maybe shape from two curves. It's uh, cool. So let's just remove this and let's just add a Bezier segment and let's add a Bezier quadratic and Let's connect these two curves to these two sockets And then as you can see the shape is getting created, but it's kind of weird But we have about a bunch of here options it lets you rotate it so that it kind of really creates the shape that you want and so this is it creates a shape from two curves and then we've got the switches and this is the last part and it's very simple uh, so the switches let's just check this float switch so a simple switch one two three that lets you select one value over three values so I just plug in this right here for example so set it to R so switch 1 gets you 100 switch 2 gets you 200 switch 3 gets you 300 and it's useful sometimes uh, I use this three float switches or th three switch because we have three axes in 3d space so sometimes 
it's very useful. And then let's use the last one of them, so Switch Geo 20, which is very uh, simple also. It practically lets you switch between different geometries. So if we had Geo 1, Geo 2, Geo 3, the Switch 1 will give us the icosphere, Switch 2 will change it to cube, Switch 3 will give it a cylinder, and so on and so on, and that is practically it. I'm sorry it took me a bit more than I expected, but as you can see I've shown you only 10 nodes in these 20, 20 minutes, uh, and uh, there are close to 100 of them. So get this add-on, it's really useful if you work with geometry nodes, uh, you'll probably also learn uh, a thing or two because all of these nodes you can you can go inside them and see what goes on inside so it's a very good add-on I highly recommend it and this is it thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one bye bye